So these are extraordinary times that we are in and I refuse to display any kind of victim mentality or panic. I am doing everything in my power for my family, for my patients, for my YouTube followers like you to just equip us with good information and things that we can do to help ourselves through this time and that's what this video is all about. So this week I took a pretty extensive five hour coronavirus class and it was really run for just medical professionals. We got um, continuing ed credits for it and it was run by a PhD MD researcher. So all of the information in it is up to date as well as it is, there's no hype. It's all based on real science, real statistics. And I'm just gonna pre present some of those to you today as well as ways that you can arm yourself and just really protect yourself during this, this crazy time and it is coming right up. So hey there beautiful people, this is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and licensed nutritionist and nutrition detective. So what I'm giving you today are just ways that you can strengthen your immune system and just a few facts um, that have nothing to do with toilet paper. There is nothing, I'm not going to talk about toilet paper at all except maybe at the end. But I want to save my absolute favorite immune fighter for the end, so stay tuned, just hang in there with me, and I want to tell you, I'm excited to tell you about that. So I told you I, I took this class, and, and here are the statistics that have come out about the virus. Um, it's kind of interesting to me. A lot of this is very interesting to me, <clears throat> the mortality rates. Now, I don't want you getting just all upset. These are, these are the mortality rates that have come out, but I think we're going to protect ourselves even more because we have more knowledge and I, I believe that those are going to be lower in the U.S. This is actually the Chinese mortality rates as of today and they are that it's um, 80 plus, the age of 80 plus it's 22 percent, 70 to 80 is 8 to 12 percent as well as um, males 4.7 percent, females 2.8 eight percent but here's the biggie and that is comorbidities that means pre-existing conditions number one is cardiovascular disease and that's 13.2 percent diabetes 9.2 percent hypertension 8.4 and cancer 7.6 percent i if you have one of those comorbidities don't panic just do everything you can um, that I tell you on this video as well as other health professionals because it's going to help to protect you. We really don't know why older people with these pre-existing conditions are more susceptible to dying from coronavirus. It could be um, the researcher, you know, these are speculations. This is not, we don't know yet, okay? So I'm telling you that we don't know yet, but he was speculating that it could be just an overwhelmed immune system as you get older, as well as certain prescription drugs. I'm not telling you to stop your prescription drugs, but there are certain ones that may make you more susceptible to the COVID-19, as well as, and his speculation was, less lung surfactant. And I thought that was a really interesting point because older people have less of that. <clears throat> so eat your butter and uh, your coconut oil so that you can increase that. Um, so what we want to really emphasize is that younger people are still at risk. They are at great risk. You still have to practice really good hygiene habits and social distancing and that kind of stuff because of the fact that, you know, I heard yesterday from two different really reliable sources that 20% of the people that are hospitalized are from the ages of 22 to 54. So so, and this is a this is a disease that could could has a potentiality of creating long time long term lung damage. So please take this seriously. Please, please, please do what all of the experts are telling you to do. And number one is just to practice social distancing. I know that just sounds, I know for a lot of us little social butterflies, that's a really hard thing to do, but I'm actually just video conferencing everyone. I'm video conferencing my patients. I was doing that already with half of my patients because I see pe people from Maine to California, but you know, it's all of my people, even if they're across the street from my office, we're all video conferencing. It's working really well. So keep doing that and, and, you know, just make sure you stay in touch with people through video 
video conferencing. It's a great way to do that. Number two is hand washing. Hand washing, soap, takes away any viral in infection, washes it right down the drain if you do it long enough. It doesn't even matter what type of soap. It doesn't even have to be an antibacterial soap, but if you're going to use hand sanitizers or wipes, make sure they have at least 70% isopropyl alcohol in them. So the next recommendations, I'm just gonna go over briefly. I'm just gonna hit them. I'm not going to elaborate on them. I've done videos on many of these already, and I will link all these videos. I'm gonna link a lot of videos today because if you want more information, I truly hope that you go to these videos. And, and so number three is actually to eat a very high alkaline diet. I know we're getting a lot of takeout food, but this is a time where you could eat at home. You know, it's interesting because we, okay, I am gonna talk about toilet paper. We have this big run on toilet paper, but we really should have a big run on our low glycemic vegetables. I'll link some links below about vegetables and what they do for your immune system, more of an alkaline diet. And, and especially cruciferous vegetables are very, very good for immunity as well as citrus fruits and other you know type of low glycemic fruits so just remember that and don't don't you know over really hoard not hoard I wouldn't say hoard but just stock up on your vegetables and eat more of them they're gonna help your immune system but they're gonna help you and they're gonna help you feel better um, also fermented foods are go into that category so sauerkraut and kimchi and miso soup just eat more eat more of those types of foods I eat sauerkraut almost every day and I'm going to go out and buy some kimchi. So number four, um, one of the things that this researcher had mentioned is zinc lozenges, not zinc per se. I don't really recommend people, people taking zinc by itself, but zinc lozenges so that they coat your throat. There's a lot of good research behind that. 15 milligrams twice a day. They last about six hours, so they coat your throat and so they make you less susceptible to any viruses. And then number five is vitamin D. Get out in the sun, get out, get out in the sun. All the weather in most parts of the country is really beautiful. It's springtime and so get out, but also if you want to supplement, don't do too much supplement with vitamin D, just about a thousand I use per day is fine, but I never get vitamin D without giving magnesium, magnesium glycinate at the same time because they work in synergy with one another, magnesium at night, vitamin D, my, vitamin D during the day. And number six is vitamin C. But again, vitamin C is something that you don't want to just take willy-nilly. Um, you need to space it out. It can't even be absorbed. You're going to get diarrhea if you take too much of it. You could take up to 2,000 milligrams per day. But I like to, I really like to take it with something called bioflavonoids. And then I also recommend taking it with something called quercetin. I'm going to link the quercetin video below. I use this one by Integrative Therapeutics and this one is a good amount of vitamin C but not too much at any one time. So you just want to really space your vitamin C at least every three hours. You could be taking that with the quercetin which is really a great immune booster. And B12. Now here's another thing. Elderly people are just statistically, we've known this for a long time, very deficient in B12. And a lot of that, again, may be, you know, just the fact that um, intrinsic factor, which you need in your stomach, decreases as we age, as well as prescription drugs. We have leaky gut issues. We have digestive issues that make it almost impossible to make vitamin B12. But I don't really recommend supplementing with it unless it's in the methyl form. So it's got to be something called methyl cobalamin and that's what I give my patients. You could get that in the form of like an active B complex. I think that's the best way of doing it and just eating foods that are high in B12. Also, and it's a great immune booster. Also methylfolate, that was another one that this researcher had mentioned, um, 400 to 1000 micrograms a day of methylfolate. Um, again, not just folic acid. If your multi just has folic acid or just has B12 in it, I would get another multi. I really would. I would get something different. The one that I use in my practice is called Protocol. And it's, um, it's 5-methylfolate, and it's a really well-absorbed form of folic acid. And your body knows what to do with the methyl form. So the number 10 
is selenium. Okay, so selenium, I talked about this in my thyroid video. I take 200 micrograms of selenium a day. And um, I think anybody with thyroid issues should. Um, you can get selenium at a very rich source is Brazil nuts, but I've just been reading lately about Brazil nuts and you can actually OD on them. So you could get too much selenium. You don't want to do that. I think 200 micrograms a day is fine. Brazil nuts are great, but just don't, you know, one to two a day. Don't be eating a whole handful of Brazil nuts every day. So that's another huge immune booster that it was a recommendation. And then there are certain probiotic strains. Really interesting. Very, very interesting. I think just a broad spectrum probiotic, at least 12 different strains. The one that I use extensively in my practice. I use it so much that I'm in trouble right now because this is on back order from the manufacturer. I don't think they're telling me now the end of, uh, I guess, April, I can get this product. And um, I love it because it has the 40 strains. And it has every single probiotic strain that was mentioned in this class that help especially with viruses and um, especially with the coronavirus. But I have another one that I'm going to recommend. So this one is on back order. It, you cannot get it. I don't even have any in my office right now. I gave my last one away yesterday. But there's another one and it is called uh, Claire Therabiotic Complete. And I checked this product and it has almost every single strain that um, that was called for to fight viruses, and that is L. brevis, uh, S. thermophilus, it was L. lactis, um, L. bagaricus, and then, oh, there's another one. It's called S. Bilardi. Now, I give that separately. You can get this. This is not on back order. But S. Bilardi, I give to a lot of my GI patients when they have IBSD, which is IBS with diarrhea. And it really, really helps to normalize the gut in that way. But it's also a huge immune fighter. So this is the Ultimate Floramax S. Bilardi. So that's another huge, wonderful immune fighter. So the one that I was shocked, I was really shocked about that he hit so hard because there's so much good research is something called NAC. It's in very short supply. I know you can't get it in any of the stores right now. or It's very, very limited. I know right now on Wellivate, uh, there's, I'm gonna uh, link a link below where you can get really all of these things, but on Wellivate, you can actually get a few of them. Now they are really behind and they're shipping about four days behind, so you're gonna have to wait for the order. But NAC is called N-acetylcysteine. This is an amazing free radical fighter. This was the thing that he, he emphasized the most of anything. You could take up to 1,200 milligrams to, per day. They, normal caps are normally in 600 milligram caps. I'm going to do a video on NACM. So not only does it lower free radical damage, it's a potent, and so it is, a, that means it's a potent antioxidant, but it also fights the virus by the interferon pathway. And so this is something that is gonna be one um, of your really best ways of dealing with this, as well as all the other things that I'm telling you about. So just remember NAC or N-acetylcysteine. And um, like I said, if you order from Will of Eight, they do have a few of the brands available and they're getting more in stock all the time. And then they're just things that I know are just commonplace, just commonplace things that are so important that we remember during this time and that sleep. And I know that that's kind of elusive for many of you. I'll do another video on that. Managing stress, just that, that is an important one. Cortisol is not real good for your immune system. And that is a stress hormone that gets released if we get too stressed. And I know having kids in the house all the time is going to be stressful. I just know that. So, um, and I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. I understand it. But just keeping those stress, stress levels low 
having a schedule for them, keeping, you know, keeping them on task is really going to help you. And also just getting out and connecting with nature. So we're going to try, we're going to try this, this afternoon, my husband and my little girl and I are going to try to go on a bike ride out into a park. And I'm really excited about that. And just creating fun, you know, making fun within your little social circles, which are not very big right now, but just creating, you know, maybe a scavenger hunt or something fun that you could do in nature or in the house to really connect with your loved ones. So connect with people. Even if it has to be video conferencing, connect with people. So I put something on social media the other day that viruses are contagious. This is something we need to take very seriously. But you know what? Fear is contagious as well. And panic is contagious. So so don't don't go there. You know, make a wise decision and also remember that hope and love and joy are also contagious. So maybe you could be the one that spreads that around a little bit, and I certainly wanna be that kind of person. So just choose what you wanna spread and, and stay safe, and I hope this was very helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, and just I'm just sending a whole bunch of love and hope out to you, and I will see you in the next video.